I think these RGB LED matrixes are one of the coolest displays you can hook up to an Arduino project. I took a look at one of these on a live stream recently and although yes I did eventually get it working, I did run into some problems at the time. Uh, okay. Hey look at this. I'm actually so happy. It doesn't seem to be working right. but. <laughs> I'm so happy all the same. I've been getting a lot of questions about the display, and rather than pointing people to a three hour live stream, I thought I'd condense it down to a couple of minutes and show you what we learned. I guess a good place to start would be what kind of display is this? The one that I got is a P3 matrix with a resolution of 64 by 32. These displays come in a lot of different configurations and sizes, and as far as I know they all work the same, but I've only ever used this one so I can't say for sure. The P3 part of the name indicates that it has a 3mm pitch. What this means is that there's a 3mm gap between each LED. You can also get this in different sizes too. I bought mine on Amazon.co.uk for £18 delivered, but you can also buy them on AliExpress and eBay for about $20. Along with the display, you also get a ribbon cable, which isn't really any use to us and I'll explain why in a few minutes. You get four screw mounts. Uh, these also have magnets attached to the bottom, which is useful for sticking to metal things. And then also the power supply cable. We can make use of this. Additional things you'll need to get the display working is a pretty large 5 volt power supply. For the 64 by 32 you need up to 6 amps, so this is an 8 amp one. You can also get these types of power supplies either, but I prefer the more laptop style ones because you'll need to wire mains voltage to here and I prefer to not electrocute myself. In addition to the power supply, you'll also need an ESP8266 board. This is a Wemos D1 Mini, they're my personal choice because they're so cheap and small. You'll also need some female to female DuPont cables. You kind of need the 20 centimeter ones, and I'll explain why in a few minutes, but uh, they're pretty cheap as well, so there's no issue with that. And then finally, you'll need a way of connecting your power supply to these cables here. The Adafruit Learn Guide shows the power cables connected to the adapter like this. I didn't think that was the best way, because I couldn't get it to screw in properly and make a solid connection. So I ended up doing something like this, where I got a little bit of perf board and put two screw terminals for each of the wires and then connected a wire from them into the power supply adapter. This gives a nice solid connection between the two, but uh, who am I to argue with what Adafruit recommends? And also, if you do go down the Adafruit route, make sure you put some electrical insulating tape around it to hold the wires in place. If you're new to Arduinos or ESP8266 development, there's some software that you need to set up before you can start using it. I have a 5 minute video which I'll link to here that covers everything you need to do to get set up. Just make sure you can program an example sketch before moving on to working with this display. The library I use for controlling the display using the ESP8266 is this one by 2DOM called PX Matrix. You'll need to download it from GitHub and add it to your library manager using the Arduino IDE. The README of the library shows a couple of different pin layouts and how to wire them up, but as far as I can tell only the labels are changing between the two, and mine didn't actually have any labels at all, so this is how I wired it up. You'll notice that there's two connectors on the back of the display, and the ESP8266 is connected to the one that the arrows are moving away from. You'll also notice that the connectors have some pins connected to each other. This is why we need the longer DuPont cables and why we can't really use the ribbon cable for anything. The last thing to mention about the wiring is that there's some pins, C, D and E, that are only connected up for certain displays. Although mine is a 1 out of 16 scan display and I definitely needed to connect up the E pin as well. These pins seem to be replaced by ground pins on displays where they're not needed, so a good way to check is to check continuity between ground and these pins to see if they're actually needed for this display. Once you have everything hooked up, we should now be able to take a look at the examples that come with the library. I recommend looking at the pixel time one because it's got more details. The first thing you need to do is change what type of constructor you're passing into this display. So for example, mine is a 64 by 32, but also it has the E pin connected up too, so I need to modify this.
The last thing we need to change is the scan rate. So for example, mine is a one is to 16. So I need to pass 16 into this display.begin. You should then be able to upload the sketch and see the following on your display. It's worth noting that those pixels that are flickering in the middle, I can't see them in person. It's just my webcam picking it up like that. And just to further try out the display, I decided to create a YouTube subscriber counter using my YouTube API library. I'll leave a link to the code for this in the description below. My webcam is actually having a hard time picking up the colors of this display, but it's actually much more vibrant when you see it in person. I do have to point out one flaw with this YouTube subscriber counter is that it kind of flickers when it's loading the data. This might make a good candidate for the dual cores of an ESP32, so I'll probably visit this project again. And hopefully that's everything to get started with what I think is the coolest display that you can connect to an Arduino at the moment. Hopefully you found this video interesting, and if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below, and uh, thanks a lot for watching.